nós vamos falar um pouco sobre é, Tamarixia radiata como um componente. So I'll talk about Tamarixia radiata as a component for managing HLB. We have studied this uh, insect for 13 years, the psyllid, so that we can come to uh, solutions to citrus growers. So there's a lot of uh, technology transfer already by means of videos uh, put together by Fundi Citrus on the topic and also bulletins and the talk about uh, the use of this uh, parasitoid. So we have to identify paths so that we come to good results. This first booklet here is dated back 2003, so it did not uh, have HLB. We did have a diaphorina citri, but not yet greening among us. This work was developed by means of uh, numerous uh, theses, with the financial funding from those institutions uh, shown on the left. And we all know that the situation of uh, greening in Brazil is a little bit different, different because around 2000, the year 2000 or a little after that, we had the greening uh, taking place in several countries. And in Brazil, diaphorina citri was already uh, known since 1942, and only in 2004, 60 some years later is when we had uh, the disease occurring. At the beginning, it was an insect, psyllid, that only caused indirect uh, damage like fumagen and leaf rolling or curling. And as of 2004, it started to cause this that you know, that is greening, and uh, then it became uh, the most important pass for citrus causing direct damage with uh, large eradications. So it came to add to other problems in citrus culture in Brazil. We already had tristeza and then leprosis and the xylella, and then we came to this disease of uh, the diaphorina that seems to be the largest problem of all. So the Candidatus Liberbacter Americanas and Asiaticas are here shown. What I'd like to tell you first is that, uh, as Marcelo mentioned, we do not use a lot of insecticide in citrus, but we do use uh, less than what's used in the United States, but we still use that. And uh, in the last years, we have used uh, different alternatives too for this uh, crop. And uh, like, for example, pheromone, the geminan drosoma that has been used in Sao Paulo, it was used in two, from 2004 to 2014, saved $1.3 billion in citric culture. And then after that, the miner, the fruit miner, the was introduced. So the AGNES, the citricla, a parasitoid, was imported to control the citrus minor in 1998. And then we saw the use of uh, the same alternative. And this is the third one. Tamarixia was found in Brazil in 2005 by one of my uh, uh, advisee from Ecuador. And then with the group uh, from Argentina, including Dr. Geraldo here present, they studied Tamarix in 2007 and identified by our group together with this uh, group from Argentina. And today we have this problem that we'll now discuss. So we do have three cases in the last years and two more to be discussed here too. That is a f uh, fungus, a fungicide for controlling the uh, psyllid and the pheromone that will be talked about by Dr. Walter Leal. So we had to start from the very beginning. That is uh, basic research that were carried out uh, since the determination of uh, the effect of temperature. Initially, we wanted to define the effect of the binomial temperature humidity so that we could know where this pest would come and how it would be spread. And then we could see that diaphorina 
has this development phase with the viability that is the, con the contrary of mortality of uh, a temperature from 18 to 20 degrees. And then after that, it starts to decrease. Uh, the relative uh, humidity will just affect the nymph phase. So the host plant, the best one would be myrtle or mariah as compared to citrus, other citrus plants. More eggs were laid at this uh, host, a rutacea, than on other citrus plants. So its capacity to increase population at our ear, uh, zero was higher than that of other hosts. So it became a host for us to think of raising this natural enemy that came um, then that became then produced. And then we saw we saw the thermal needs for the Tamariksha radiata. And uh, then we saw that there was also a decrease of its uh, development according to temperature, which stabilizes at uh, 30 degrees, similar to what happens to Diaphorina citri. And uh, this insect prefers to parasitize the last instars of the psyllid. And uh, parasitism is in larger at 25 degrees Celsius of temperature. And uh, it emerges or is born at temperatures higher than 25 degrees. And uh, the proper humidity is 70%, ideally, for this enemy. So we define the characteristics of temperature and humidity, saying that this insect has a limit of a temperature of 32 degrees. And diaphorina has a lower limit of 13.5. And tamarixa hadiata, 7.1 degrees. And uh, humidity would be 70% ideally for both. And also we saw that for diaphorina, well, it has a broader range, 28 to around 28, and um, so we started uh, raising Tamarixia, taking into consideration those aspects, and we developed a model that is in the bulletin that we mentioned before. So there was really good uh, development with the raising of insects by using cages and all, and then some People started to use the model in, uh, like the one in Costa Rica, that is an external raising. And that doesn't work in Brazil. People started to do that, and I went there and I said, that's not going to work because in Costa Rica, they have uh, during the year a thermal stability, which in Brazil is not the case. In Brazil, in winter, we cannot raise insects. It has to be internal at a lab, in an enclosed environment. So then we started to raise. Uh, insects like that. And as you know, there was no use for us to release that insect in commercial groves because of the insecticides that it's applied. It's impossible. But there was no psyllid in the commercial area, but we did have greening. And of course, that was uh, seen to be do uh, focal points to be out of the commercial groves. So the insects would uh, um, get infected and would migrate one to two kilometers until the commercial grows. And uh, they came from abandoned groves, non-sprayed groves, areas of myrtles and organic uh, um, groves and backyard uh, trees. That's why we started to release the parasitoid and we released uh, 900 uh, or 400 parasitoids per hectare. And uh, this area corresponded to 12,000 hectares in the state of Sao Paulo, responsible for the primary focus of the disease. What we see here is the orifice for releasing uh, tamarixia of uh, nymph there is, uh, uh, has that as parasite. So that is outside the commercial groves in the areas that we refer to where the insect becomes infected and moves to those commercial areas. So today we have 
eight bio plants in the state of Sao Paulo, bio factories and different points. And here I have show eight of them. Even Ezalki is placed here, but in fact, Ezalki is uh, aimed at research, although we have produced more insects at first. Today, in Hidden Cell Farm uh, of uh, Citrusuku, there is yet another bio plant or bio factory that is not uh, mentioned here that is producing. This month has produced 190,000 parasitoids. So those units have uh, produced a certain number of uh, insects. This insect, this is uh, data until today, updated, May 2018. 13.5 million parasitoids have been produced, and 11.1 of them were released in those areas we mentioned before. Of course, the adaptation of uh, the parasitoid is variable depending on the region. So here, for example, we have in the central region, the increased parasitism when we release insects is 10.8 times, and the reduction in population is 93%. So the population of diaphragma reduces in 93%. But in some other areas, we have increased only of only 2.5 percent the parasitism and 69.6 is the reduction of the population so that is linked to shootings that take place and also in the in the binomial that we mentioned before temperature humidity so we then started to have zoning for the state of Sao Paulo for different regions so that we could establish the rate of uh, diaphragma to Tamarixia. And of course, that is variable according to what we see here. One generation of a diaphragma for 2.1 uh, or uh, in other uh, figures for T radiata. Radiata. And that's for constant temperatures that we mentioned before. So we repeated all that for different temperatures, simulating the four seasons of the year, spring, summer, winter, and fall. So the number of generation is kind of uh, the same, although we saw that there was a little error in the same case because we consider the period of a pre position that is the period that is Right before egg laying, we consider that to be 10 days in the first case that we studied. Temperatures uh, were kept constant. In the second case, we saw that, that during winter, this period can be of 30 days. So in the first case, for some of uh, the figures that we refer to, it can be overestimated because there is a variation in this uh, pre overposition period. But it's possible if we use that as reference, the numbers that we refer to, the thermal requirements by the insects and the temperature data put together, it's possible that uh, after we use the yellow uh, sticky traps for collecting insects, that we use uh, the time of release due to the, you know, according to the season of the year and according to the region. So if we take, take into consideration the thermal requirements, then we can define the period of time that is necessary for the release to take place. So we'll only show some cases. There are um, icons like uh, this one in Itapetininga in the farm Hesha, where we have uh, 735 yellow uh, sticky traps where we carried out the study. And when we released uh, the insects in the first semester, in the second semester, rather, of 2014, in this region, there was a concentration of uh, psyllid in this interpolation method shown here. And uh, we had the release of insects that then um, tried to run away or to come far away from the parasitoid. And then the population was drastically reduced, as you can see. And that is approximately 80% reduction. And it was very clear that the number of psyllid per trap uh, 
after such release decreased according to this curve. And in percentage, that is highly significant because the number of traps with psyllids, if we divide the second semester by the first, it went down as shown here. So psyllid was really controlled in this uh, range of 80 percent up to 80 percent and uh, it spread up to 40 kilometer so what we are going to see here today is that by this index that is called fuzzy we can uh, assess the coexistence of host and parasitoid that was the work of uh, Dr. Adriano, that is a graduate study student that specializes on this topic. We use, we use the characteristic that I mentioned before, temperature, humidity, they're favorable as conditions, and also the local settings of temperature and uh, uh, humidity. And then we come to this index, that is, it's a coexistence index that shows when we have uh, over uh, um, or superimposition of uh, favorable conditions, conditions, and when we do not have the superimposition of favorable conditions, that is, when they coexist or partially coexist, or when when they do not coexist. So here we have uh, coexistence uh, higher than 0.65 partial from 0 0.35 uh, uh, to 0.65 and no coexistence below 0.35. So it's possible that you have your city and you assess it monthly on a monthly basis for you to see if you can have uh, success or not for the use of this parasitoid. For example, we have here three um, regions, IMB, KUB, and Getulina. Those places show a parasitism potential of 37 percent, 38. So this index is high. So there is coexistence between parasitoid and the pest. And in this case here, NMB, there was a low percentage of uh, parasitism. Then this index is below that value we mentioned before. So. In that example that I mentioned before, where there was the migration and then the reduction of the population, that is the region of Itapetininga, we can see that there is a period of time where there is coexistence and a period of time where there is a partial coexistence, showing that um, value that we mentioned before. So this is a new way to know if uh, this is going to work or not. And you can check that. That's going to be uh, available at uh, our website for Izalki. So you can find your city. And by using the climatic characteristics for the place, you can see if there will be the possibility or not for success for that location. So just to end, I'd like to uh, highlight some um, points that are of interest for controlling the past. The distribution of diaphorina in Sao Paulo is variable according to the availability and abundance of new shootings, like Dr. Silva mentioned, and that the size of population is dependent on the climate. But of course, we have to have shootings. The viability of a D citri in the field is much smaller than in the lab. I don't know if you could see that, but I showed the table, the first of them, where there was a variation in terms of viability of 12.2 uh, to 32 at 69.9 at 18 degrees, whereas in the field, it varies from 1.7 to 21.4 percent. So mortality in the field is much larger. The viability in egg laying are higher for the variety Valencia and lower for Hamley. The rootstock does not interfere in the attacking by D. citri. In the pre-oviposition period, it will vary from uh, 
six to point eight days for uh, warmer regions to thirty one point four in colder areas the key factor for populational growth of the citri is represented by eggs and nymphs of first instars parasitism is higher in uh, um, moderate climates and the parasitism is uh, independent of the variety where psyllid developed so they're very important characteristics for us to know of so that we can come to control successfully so for the future the use of the fungi that will be talked about later on will allow us for the future to release parasitoid also in commercial areas as long as the product the fungi be selective to the um, to tamarix radiata the sexual pheromone that will be uh, talked about later will allow the release of the parasitoid at the right time where the psyllid occur it will necessary to know uh, the adaptation of the parasitoid in different areas with the probable reduction of the application of insecticides the superimposition of zoning for the pest and the parasitoid should be validated in the field thank you very much that's all i had to say